I want to start with a crazy line. You ready for this? God sees you better than you see yourself. Run that one back through your head. God sees you better than you see yourself. Now, guys, I'm, I'm, I'm making a real radical calculation. This is not of the Spirit. But I say y'all are coming into college, right? Some of you new students for the first time. By the way, I just want to give you a heads up. Tomorrow they're going to give you this thing called a syllabi or a syllabus. And those things that are due, they are really due. It is no longer high school, okay? So turn them in. Remember, you're paying them now to get an education. Crazy, isn't it? Crazy. Welcome. Students, welcome to this place. I want to first of all commend you and thank you for being already wise enough at a young age that before you even start class, you encounter God. Because you're going to encounter God in class. Some of you are going to take calculus. That will bring you to your knees and to the Lord. Okay? There has always been prayer in school because they give tests. Some of you will pray that the girl next to you will notice you. And you will pray fervently for these things. But here's what I want you to know. God already has a better plan for your life than you can conjure up. How many of y'all believe that is true? Because it is true. Now, I'm going to read you a weird, a weird piece of Scripture. If you'll go with me to Colossians, okay? This is a two-part sermon. So today, I want you to know right off the bat, whatever you're going through, God's with you. Whatever you're going through, God's already what? And so I want everybody to take a deep breath. Oh, this is about me listening to God and not acting good for God. How many of y'all church has been like this? If we'll be good little boys and girls, God will do little great things for us. And so every little church has got its good little boy and good little girl list, and we check off the list. That's why we have so many denominations, because we get hung up on a behavior, and we miss a Savior. God already knows our behavior, and guess what he said about all of it? It all stinks. So for all of you that come walking in here with all your little prideful Methodisms and baptisms and Presbyterianisms, God ain't impressed. Amen. You really want to mature? I, I want us to mature. Well, watch this. Here's what I'm going to tell you now. Here's what I've learned. You're going to mature. That's going to happen. Now, how it happens, you get some conversation with God. Because when you stand before God, you're going to stand holy and righteous. Now, you can either cooperate with God and listen, or he can take it out of you. I'd say listening is a good experience. I would say let's listen to God and see what he might do in our lives. Because guess what? Just like we sang, man, that's what God's all into. How many of y'all glad to know that God loves you more than anybody? Some of y'all going, my husband loves me a lot. Not like Jesus does. One of my favorite songs from Eric Church. Y'all listen to Eric Church? Anybody here listen to Eric Church? It's okay. You can confess it. <laughs> I like country music. I think country music's got more real lyrics than Christian music does. And one of the songs is one of my favorite songs because this is the way Elizabeth has always loved me. She loves me like Jesus does. She loves me like Jesus does. She doesn't love me like Elizabeth loves me because if she loved me like Elizabeth loved me, she would have left me a long time ago. She loves me like Jesus does. And that's the way you've loved Chuck, isn't it? I just know Chuck. And if it was just up to your love, it wouldn't be enough. But you brought in the Holy Spirit and said, all right, Chuck, act up. Here's Jesus. How many of y'all realize Jesus is already on the scene? Now, I've been trying to teach this to you, and I'm going to say it a zillion times because it's going to take that long for the body of Christ to get it. You already have love, joy, and peace inside of you. You are, oh, don't pray for patience. You already got it. Don't, don't ask to be faithful. It's already been given to you. It is the fruit of the Holy Spirit. And I need to give you reference to that. That is Galatians 5, verses 22. 5, 22. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Now think about that. If that's going on in here, being released in here, Jack, will people want to go to church? We don't have to do all that marketing, do we? Wait, watch this. If we would release the love of God fully in this place, you think the eclipse is messing up traffic. Wait till that happens. 
But you know what? We got to make a decision. How far you want to go with God? Well, if you're a true believer, He's going to take you all the way into heaven. How many of y'all glad about that? Now, now, no, I'm, I'm really. I, I want you to think about this for a minute. You ultimately end up in the presence of God if you're a believer in the Lord Jesus Christ. How many of you all see that as great news? And, and, and here's why. Watch this. Today's not it, but it may be for somebody. We're all going to have a day. Now, Paul tells us we got to mature. Now, how many of y'all understand this? You're going to mature whether you want to or not. How many of y'all tried to fight getting old? How many of y'all put a battle up with it for a while? Jimmy, you got a few years. Have you won? What happened? I love that. He said he looked in the mirror and sees his daddy. <laughs> How many of y'all starting to see your daddy? <laughs> How many of y'all ladies, man, you've rolled it up, you've rolled it back, you've pinned it back, you've covered it up, you've, you've put, you know, digital radar screen test on it, and how many of y'all notice it's folding up no matter what you do? Here's why. We will mature. Now, hold on. That doesn't just go on in the physical realm. That goes on in the spiritual realm. Now, you say, well, how in the world do I mature? I begin to see it like Jesus. Now, I started this message with this. Jesus sees you better than you do. There's three things we usually love. Let me give them to you real quick, and I'm going to get into the Scripture. Go to Colossians chapter 1, 24. Verse 24. Chapter 1, verse 24. Y'all have heard it said in the church, if we just love one another more, it'll happen, right? But you know, it's the, Bible, the Bible doesn't say for us to focus on each other. But we do that all the time. I had people that were like, well, I love so-and-so, and they were still mean to me. Of course they were. They're a jerk. Why are you upset about it? That's what they are. Until the Lord changes them. Make sense? I mean, all, all this is a popular one in America. If I could just love myself. <laughs> okay, so you love yourself and what? Here's what you're really saying. I love myself on my way to hell. So I guess if we go to hell and all love each other and love ourselves, it would be a better place. Come on. Oh, y'all are getting it. Look at your eyes. You're going, oh, my gosh, it makes sense. There'll be a bunch of politically correct, cuddled up people in hell. I guess they can all find another myth, equality. You know why you can't ever find that? It doesn't exist. That's why nobody's ever found it. Because it doesn't exist. That's not what God is. God is eternal. God is revolutionary. God is transformational. God doesn't play with our words because they're too weak. If you will... God's not impressed with our eclipse. And basically, in the scam of eternity, guess what you and I are? We are eclipses. We're here for a moment and what? How many of y'all found that's going to be true? Here for a moment and what? How many of y'all find that to be good news? Because in this moment, guess who you can receive? Jesus. And once you ask Jesus in your life, once you say, Lord Jesus, I know I'm a sinner. Lord Jesus, forgive me of my sin. Lord Jesus, I believe you've died on the cross. Lord Jesus, come into me. Guess what he says? Now, I got a Jesus that knows how to speak Kentucky. So you know what he says? I'm in. Now y'all come with me. How many of y'all glad to know if you're going with Jesus, you're going in the right place? All right, so here's what we're working on. If we already got it, instead of going to get it, let's reveal it. And that means we're no longer going to do our work for him, but we're going to allow him to do his work in us. So watch this. I'm going to tell you this again. B, quit trying to work so hard to be like Jesus because he's already made you like him. Now you got to embrace the journey. You ready? You got to what? Embrace the journey. How many of y'all glad to know your journey is your journey? How many of y'all got crazy stuff in your journey? Raise your hand if so far in, the, in your life you have had a painful moment. Raise your hand if you've had a painful moment. Everyone, okay, great. And those of you that haven't, yours is coming. 
<laughs> You're probably somebody else's pain is what it is. Now check this out. Pain is not a bad thing. Say that to your neighbor. Pain is not a bad thing. Come on, say it again. Pain is not a bad thing. The Bible does not resist pain like we do. See, we say, if I got pain, I must be a bad person, right? We kind of go Job's wife. Remember old Job? You know, Job was righteous. Good things were happening to him. Guess what? Job was righteous when bad things were happening to him. Because the things of this world could not determine Job's faith. That's who we ought to be. I'm going to go through president after president. How many of y'all are glad to know that presidents do not hold eternity? Somebody say amen. amen. How many of y'all are glad to know that Congress people are not smart? <laughs> They're not God. Let me tell you what this nation is missing. Believers. And so church, instead of cowering this time, we need to reveal this time. We don't need signs. We don't need petitions. We need to start preaching the correct gospel. We don't need to take care of everybody's morals. We need to show them Jesus who can take care of everybody's morals. I don't know about y'all, but I didn't straighten up till I fell in love with Jesus. Jerry Pickock, ain't no preacher straightening me up. I remember walking into revival. Flipped a Marlboro out on the way. Marlboro red box. Mm. I don't think they're in heaven, though. I wish they were. First thing I heard, Jimmy, first thing I heard in that sermon, old preacher stood up, if you smoke cigarettes, you're going to hell. And then they said they didn't taste good. Well, that's a lie. <laughs> See, I'm going to get real with you. The things of this world, they do please. But none of them are permanent for a moment. So guess what? They eclipse. I mean, we got people driving all day for 48 seconds. <laughs> and I'm not going to compare that to some other things. <laughs> See what I'm saying? We have these little moments in life, we think that they're a grand moment, and we miss the grand moment of living. The grand moment is that Jesus loves you and nobody can take that away. Paul knew this, and he discovered this. And guess what he said? This is my ministry now. You ready? You ready? Who you going to love? If you love Jesus, it'll all be revealed. Now I rejoice in my sufferings for your sake. How many of y'all can rejoice in your sufferings? Now, don't go find something to feel bad about. Just live. It'll come to you. And in my flesh, I am filling up what is lacking in Christ's affliction for the sake of his body. That is the church. Here's what Paul's telling everybody. Whatever I'm going through, it's worth revealing the gospel. Y'all remember this? I couldn't tell you this last year. I couldn't tell you this in June. It wasn't until six weeks ago that I could tell you this. I am glad that I went through what I went through. Because what I went through has brought our church to this place. Because I kept asking God, God, why don't you let me go? I did. I mean, I love y'all, but I didn't want to stay here. Which is, where he is is better than where I am. Well, that was the way I was thinking. But guess what? God had to correct my thinking. How many of y'all, your thinking has to be corrected? How many of y'all got some bad thinking? Look at your neighbor and ask them if they got any bad thinking. Y'all got any bad thinking? Y'all got any bad thinking? Chris Allen, we know you got bad thinking. Uh, we've heard it. It's going to rain today, and it was sunny. <laughs> Chris, I'm not dogging you. You're not Jesus. I have never thought you were Jesus. And when I hear people criticize you, I go, he ain't Jesus. Isn't it amazing? I love it. We got all these people who are trying to predict the path of the eclipse. What if God stands the sun still and there is no eclipse? Amazing. I, he hadn't given me a word on that. I don't, think God's, I, I don't think God's as fired up about the eclipse as you are. But let me tell you what he died for. He took on pain so that you and I could live. And Paul said, of which I have became a minister according to the stewardship from God that was given to me for you to make the word of God fully known. 
When I read through that a few weeks ago, Jesus said, hey. I said, yes, Lord. Get it. I said, thank you, Lord. He said, now you know. Make it fully known. Well, this is fully known. If you'll love Jesus more than anything else, everything else will fall in line. If you will love Jesus more than anything else, everything else will what? It'll fall in line. You know why? You can't be a racist and a bigot and follow Jesus. You can't say only particular people matter if, if, if you're following Jesus. You've got to get Jesus' desire. Guess what Jesus said? His desire is that all people would come to repentance. Not some of them. All of them. Guess what Jesus, when he was hanging up on that cross, he was praying you would receive what he was doing. Pretty cool, isn't it? How many of you already received that? I'm going to give you two messages today. If you have received Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, it's time for those of us of faith to wake up and be what we are. Full of love, joy, what? Sheriff, it's amazing. You're full of love, joy, and peace. What do you think about that? And there ain't nothing you can do about it. Why? Who got a hold of you? Jesus. You tough, but you ain't that tough. Put you on a cross, you'll holler. <laughs> Put me on the cross, and I wouldn't be saying this. I wouldn't be saying this. Father, forgive them, for they know not what to do. That's not what Steve Harris would have said. I'd have said, Father, show them who you are. <laughs> huh? Should sick them. That's right. And sick them, Daddy. Huh? How many of y'all have been hollering? You sick them, Daddy. Because, see, my heart ain't God's heart. But guess what? There was a day when I was a little old nine-year-old boy, and I walked a big old long aisle at First Baptist Church, Bowling Green, Kentucky, with a bowl haircut. And I took the hand of a great pastor named Dr. Roland Burhans. I said, Dr. Burhans, Jesus Christ is coming to my life and saved me. I'm a sinner. He said, you know what sin is? I said, yes, sir. I said, it says obey your parents. I don't do that. And Dr. B, I want to tell you, I've, I've, I've puffed a cigarette. Because when you're nine years old, I mean, that's a big sin. Because <laughs> your Sunday school teacher told you to, right? right. <laughs> I'm serious. Now, don't go do that. See, I, I realized that I needed Jesus at nine. You said, were you saved when you were nine years old? Absolutely. Jesus Christ came into my life. He gave me a full of everything. And it's been revealed throughout all of my life. So guess what? I'm not asking y'all to go do stuff anymore. I'm so tired of us preachers wearing you church folk out. You know what we've done? We've not discipled you in the power of the Holy Spirit. We've given you a behavior modification program. And you know it hadn't worked. How many of y'all know it doesn't work? Sherry, sure, you're a teacher, but if I go, if you go do one, two, three, four, this is going to happen to you. That's not true. That's why some of you struggle every day. And God didn't call you to struggle. He called you to reveal. He said, Paul said, listen, I'm here to make it fully known. So if you hit me, you'll know Jesus. If you love me, you'll know Jesus. No matter what you do, you will find Jesus in my life. That's why he said crazy things like this. Crazy things like this. Paul said, I've learned to be content over there in Philippians in all situations. He said, whether I got money or don't have money, whether I have plenty or have, whatever I have want, I have learned to be content that Jesus Christ is my Lord. How many of y'all want to live in that kind of freedom? Well, hold on. We're coming to the altar. You already have it. But you know what? It's time for us to release it. And there's some things that block us from it. It's already there. But we get scared, and we start thinking what? Well, what, what's so-and-so going to think about me? Well, yeah, it's radical. I, don't, I want you all to know that people at Vanderbilt Hospital thought your pastor was weird. Because I was saying things they hadn't heard. Nurses come walking in my room, Mr. Harris, it looks like you're going to live. I said, yeah, it stinks. I wasn't depressed. It wasn't depressed. I was like, man, you mean I, 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 got, I got a moment where I can be in the eternal reality of heaven or, or I can be here listening to Donald Trump? Not a hard decision. That's not a hard decision. 
But God said, we're not, full, we're not done yet because one of the problems with the church in, in the United States is, guess what? The Word of God is not fully been revealed. It's been tinkered with. It's been played with. So we got to come to the altar today, and guess what we got to say? Uh, God, I want you to be revealed in me. How many of y'all cool with that? And that means no matter where you are, you want to make known who Jesus is. Check this out. The mystery hidden for ages and generations, but now revealed to his saints. Oh, man. Look at your neighbor and say, you are some revelation. You got that? No, you really are. And I know some of you church people are going, Pastor, I wish you'd be quiet and just give me three points in a poem. You like the world you live in today? That's three points in a poem. This sinful, godless world that we live in today, it came from one place, a church in America that loved itself more than its Savior and has asked the wrong question for 100 years. What are we going to do is the wrong question. Lord, what are we going to allow you to do in us? That's the right question. You know why we don't want to ask that question? Well, we're scared. Why are we scared, Mark? We're out of control. And one thing that Southern Baptists are notably known for is being consonant control freaks. True? If it doesn't fit in our little equipping centers, if it won't work in our Bethmore workbook, if it won't go one, two, three, we don't want anything to do with it. And Paul said, let me tell you what, they beat me, they whipped me, they've chastised me, they've shipwrecked me, they've tried everything to get rid of me, and here Jesus is still bringing in the mystery of the grace of Jesus Christ. Oh, church, the world is hungry to see that group of believers. Not the group that protests, but the group that reveals. I'd like for us at Hillview to just be a small speck of those kind of folk. What do you think? So that means this. As we grow and mature, may the revelation of Jesus Christ, the mystery hidden for ages, which is now in action. Watch this. We need to do two things. You ready? Which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. We proclaim warning everyone and teaching everyone with all wisdom that we may present everyone mature in who? You will be mature in Christ. How many of you know when you get to heaven, you're going to look real good? Come on. What are y'all going to do? Just go in heaven and go like this? Well, Lord, wait just like, where's my Sunday school class? <laughs> Lord, wait, what are we going to do next? But I'm going to tell you what, it's a full and abundant life. See, here's what you don't understand. The world ain't got it going on. They are eclipsed. You're in the light. Live toward the light. Does this finally make sense now? Paul said, in this moment I see dimly in a mirror. Right now I see dimly. But I see enough to know who the light is. But then he gives us a great promise. One day I shall be fully known. Now, Cindy, you told me something a few months, about two months ago. It would freak everybody else out. I'm, can I, do I have permission to say it? It was a beautiful day, and guess what you told me? You said, Pastor, I woke up this morning, and I told the Lord, it's such a beautiful day. This would be a good day for me to go to heaven. Yep. Now, see how Cindy says that naturally? There's people freaking out right now, Cindy. Oh, my gosh, she said that? But it was so Cindy. Cindy said, this is a beautiful, clear, sunny day. What a better day to go see Jesus than on a... She was like, Lord, I'm tired. She has to put up with Earl. <laughs> now, watch this. But it wasn't that, Cindy. It's that you've lived so long, and you and Earl have lived so long loving Jesus that that looks so much better than what you've seen because you're not seeing in a dim mirror anymore. You are beginning to see fully who he is and fully who he's made you to be. 
And that's more beautiful than anything you will ever see. So I hope you get it, amen? So we gotta do two things, you ready? Let's quit making discipleship this such a painful situation. Because guess what it really is? Allowing the Holy Spirit to parent you. Watch this, two things parents do. How many of y'all have been parents in here or being parents? I don't guess you ever check out being a parent, do you? Huh? Even if you're a grandparent, you're still a what? You're always going to be a parent. So if you've got a child, now they need to leave the house. Amen. Eventually you need to parent them long distance. Amen? Amen? The farther you can get them to move, the better things are between you, I promise. No, I'm just kidding. I, I, don't kill me. Look, check us out. Paul said, I'm going to do two things for you here in this church of Colossians. We proclaim warning everyone and teaching everyone with all wisdom that we may present everyone mature in Christ. For this I toil, struggling with all his energy, that he powerfully works within me. Not I powerfully work for him. But let God do you. Let God reveal all this great stuff that he's already put in you. We do two things. Sometimes I have to warn you guys, don't I? You know what I did to my kids? Remember, would you, I bet you did this to your kids. Did you ever warn them? Why? Because you love them. But you don't want them to mess up. Why? Because you love them. How many of y'all love your kids? The kids are going to hate this right now. If you love them, say no. And you say, Pastor Ayers, when I say no, they don't love me. They're not supposed to. If you have an adolescent that likes you, you are parenting in the wrong direction. And my kids didn't like me. They still don't like me. Yeah, they didn't like you, did they, Jimmy? But you know why? I wasn't there to be liked by them. I was there to do two things, warn them and teach them. By the way, I can tell you, it turns out a lot better if you'll just warn them and teach them instead of try to be their best friend. Because a lot of times when you become their best friend, then they forget the ultimate friend, Jesus Christ. And so instead of going to him to get what they really need, they go to mom and daddy forever to get what they need. And here's the problem with mom and daddy. They're an eclipse. And they're not going to be here. And so when they're not here, that child crumbles. That's called immaturity. Isn't that cool? My daddy and mama, they're great parents. I was out of the house at 18. I was on my way. Watch this. I'm going to blow some of y'all away. Y'all ready for this? Especially young people. It's going to fry you all with millennial minds. Y'all ready for this? I paid taxes when I was 18. You ready? I had a job. You know what you can do? You can go to college and work and come out of college debt-free. Jeepers! Pastor Steve has solved the college debt problem. Better than Bernie. You see, Bernie didn't have a job till he was 45. And it was an elected position. You know how many people we got leading this nation that have never toiled? No, never toiled. Charlie, you and I see things like, why? As soon as you could throw a hay bale, what were you doing? Me too. That's what we need again, hay balers. That's a good discipleship program. That'll keep you off drugs. Throw hay from 5 o'clock in the morning till it gets dark in the evening. And guess what you'll want to do? Sleep. It's hard to smoke dope while you're already sleeping. <laughs> Warn them and what? Teach them. So today, here's the altar. If you've never asked Jesus Christ to come into your life, you can't earn your way to heaven. And, li and please listen, because I know there's some of you in here, you've lived in the South so long, it's a false teaching. It permeates the churches of the South. I hear it every funeral. Well, old Joe, he's a good old boy. Good old boy doesn't mean salvation. Because let me tell you what Jesus said about good. There is none. He said, all have sinned, not some have sinned. And he said, I couldn't save myself. Now, here's good news. 
but he said he's willing to save me. I don't know about y'all, but I think it's fantastic. <laughs> it is so great that Jesus said, you know what? Even though you've messed up, I want to come into your life, and I, and I, want, to, I want to just, I, I, I want to show you who I am. So today, how many of y'all need to just say, Lord Jesus, come into my life, forgive me of my sin, and receive Jesus? You say, what's he going to do? First of all, your sins are going to be canceled. How many of y'all need some sins canceled? Okay, now Jamie said this. It was, it was awesome. He said he was in a conversation yesterday with a, with a fellow believer, and this believer was just mad as he could be at some of the sin in this world. And Jamie looked at him and said, hey, I don't want you to get angry with me, but he goes, don't you wish you were as mad at your own sin as you are everybody else's? Can you imagine if we wanted to get rid of our own? Because I don't know about y'all. My sin, I really don't think stinks. But yours, you need to repent. <laughs> Any of y'all wired that way? Huh? How many of y'all can find fault with others quicker than you can find fault with yourself? Here's why. You're either going to love yourself, or you're going to love what surrounds you, or you're going to love God. And when you love God... You'll know yourself and love better what surrounds you. So guess what I suggest? Lord Jesus, come into my life. Forgive me of my what? God desires that everybody in here gets saved. Now, some of you are going to walk out of here today. You do it every Sunday. I wish I love you so much. Because you know what you believe? You believe you're going to live forever. For those of us that are believers, it's time for us to reveal what God's already given us. Yay. So I want us to go to heaven loving each other and being joyful and being at peace. You say, well, personally, we live in a crazy world. Oh, we've always lived in a crazy world. Do you think it was peaceful for Noah to be shoved in a boat for 40 days and 40 nights with his mother-in-law in there? <laughs> Drafts. Ah, peaceful. Watch this. Here's why some of y'all are so upset. You follow a lie. You believe in a fairy tale. It's called the American dream. And the problem with the American dream, it is an eclipse. It is very temporary. It is very selfish. And it will not last. And then there's God's vision. That you would say, Lord Jesus, come into my life. Forgive me of my sins and live in the glory of heaven. Which one you want? Believers, I'm going to invite you to come today, and here's what I'm going to ask you to do. Let's make sure we listen to what God says, and we learn what God says. Coach Sullivan, you and I have coached for years. It was usually a pretty good game, and we won if they did what we said. True? I mean, they did. I mean, if you run and block and do like Coach Sullivan and I said, we were great coaches. We had disobedient players, Jack. <laughs> what are you grinning about, Blake? <laughs> And so every Monday, we watch this, every Sunday, we would have a film. And nobody did it until the film came up. And when we would pause the film, they'd all go, hmm. So if God puts a film on your life, does it reveal love and joy and peace? Because that's already there. So if love and joy and peace is not in your life, why don't you come today and say, God, Open my ears so I can hear and be who you've made me to be. Y'all cool with that? Well, let's stand together. Y'all stand together. God's coming. Some of you need to come to be baptized, by the way, today. If you need to be baptized in between services, we'll get that done. We'll get that done at any time. All right? We're off the clock right now. God's going to do his thing. God's going to do his thing. We might have bad traffic today. You need to get used to it. It's supposed to be bad tomorrow, too. But it will not last forever. You ready? Let Jesus have your life. Lord Jesus, you already know who you wanted to save today. You brought them here today so they could hear that you're a loving God, a merciful God, a rich God, and a true God. Lord Jesus, listen, listen. Whoever you are, Lord Jesus, come into my life, forgive me of my sin. I don't care what sin you think can't be forgiven. Jesus said he forgives all sin. Lord Jesus, I receive you. Now for those of you who follow him, I'm going to ask that we come to the altar today in prayer as believers. Lord, may I be faithful and may I be teachable. Not what do I need to do 
May I be faithful and may I be what? Teachable. Young students, if you'll be faithful to your studies and teachable, four years from now, you're not going to be like this. Is that cool? And God's going to put great things in your lives. I promise you. That's what he does. All right, church, altar's open. Holy Spirit's moving. People need to come and be baptized. They need to come and receive Jesus Christ because he's led you that way. You, you need to come and, and let's pray. Well, this is a radical idea. Why don't we pray for our city before it has something tragic to it? Yeah. I don't know why it is. Get all the Christians praying after somebody gets shot. Well, let's pray that nobody gets shot. That's the kind of God we got. Amen. Make it happen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah.